only attract the kids. You're someone who you studied here, you stayed here, you've like set things up, worked here, and there's not many people that have necessarily done that. My being in a particular place, my housing situation, that's just taken care of because I'm secure here. So the rest of my energy can be spent on other things. Well, it's funny that you say you do feel stable and secure here. I mean, it wasn't long ago that you just quit your job. Yeah, for want of a better way, like emotionally secure here or something. Right. Like, I've, like I've invested myself here. The big part is I'm in a relationship, having a child with someone. I guess what I'm interested in is, you know, the cycling, running marathons, all these projects you do, like, you know, you, it's, it seems like hard work. No one's asking you to necessarily do it, but you feel it's important. How does that keep going? I have quite a lot of energy. Pretty much every single thing that I do is based around being interested in people. I've heard people use the term like to be like a, sometimes to be a curator is to be like a martyr or something. Who says that? I don't know, I think it's in the Bible <laughs> or something. Uh, but the, this idea that you, there's, there's a somewhat of a, a sacrifice to let other people's voices known or something. Yeah. And not necessarily think that's true to all curating or, or putting exhibitions on or working with other people, for example. One of the things I'm quite interested in is sometimes taking that back seat so other artists can have their voice. But for me, that doesn't feel like it's a sacrifice. It feels like it's just me being really interested in what people are doing and that yeah. comes through everything that I do and helps me have the energy to do that all the time. I feel like I keep myself busy as a, almost like a safety net from having like a mental breakdown or something or having to, <laughs> having to like be depressed. Like I think if I'm just like doing this, doing that, as long as I'm caught up in that, I, I feel like I'm fine. Like you can't stop or something. Yeah, you can't stop. Yeah. And there was points where I felt like I have stopped and you do find a difference in your mental outlook or your stability or happiness or something. That was one of the things where I left my job was I kind of felt like I've been doing the same thing for quite a long time, worked in retail longer than I've done anything else. But I, I mean, I worked in retail and I always thought it was like an amazing experience of being an artist because you basically learn to convince people that they want something or like something that they don't necessarily need. But you also start to convince yourself that you enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. So <laughs> when you're in retail, especially as a manager, you have to be the person that can't crumble. People would be like, I don't, I don't know how you do this. Like you're enthusiastic every day. I have to give you the impression that I love this job and this is my like right. passion. And there's some and, and there's quite a discipline in being able to learn that, I think. But I mean that sounds like the same experience as being at art school though, isn't it? Because uh, I always remember when you leave art school and there's that horrible time when you're just like, oh my God, I'm on my own. And you, you have the realization that no one's paid to care about what you're doing. Everyone tells you how hard it is and you don't believe it. Well, that was my experience anyway. Leaving art school, well, we went to S1 Bursary, which again had a certain procedure about it that meant that people would actively look, if they were looking for artists in Sheffield, they might look for the bursary as like a shortlisted way of finding like a, people who cared about making artwork rather yeah. than having to look at So there was like a, f a few of you were like picked out, given a studio for a year. Yeah, yeah, so we were offered... So then all your friends hate you instantly. Yeah, well I was, I was going to go back to Hull and then they offered me the bursary and they gave you a studio and an exhibition, which was amazing. And it meant I could stay, um, I stayed in Sheffield for it. You were saying you've just been appointed as the director for Block mm. Projects, which is another yeah. sort of gallery and studios within Sheffield. But now you're you're in that role now. I mean, yeah. and you, do you, you feel like less of an artist? Yeah, but I always use that expression. People that have been like, oh, so is Block now going to be like your art practice? And it, I think it genuinely is. My yeah. art practice in the last couple of years has been based around me being involved with other artists. When I left university, I was like, why are the people in these big galleries asking me to do shows? Yeah. Like, I could do it. Just give me yeah, the like chance. Why, why don't they care about me? Yeah, why don't they care about me? Give me the chance, I'll, 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 I'll do it. I'll, Give me a Barbican show, I'll make an amazing show. You just, just give me the opportunity. You really want a show at the Barbican, right? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I would. What's quite interesting about Block, however, is that we've got like a, an idea of working with emerging artists, and that is such a big remit that actually we can show some people that are just out of university alongside yep. some people who've been working for quite a while. I'm going to get loads of people asking me. Uh, <laughs> for a show? Yeah, yeah, loads and of people. And everyone hate you, and yeah, go, why, yeah. why is he not giving me a show? It's quite an interesting thing to think about, I guess, the position that you change in quite a short period of time. Well, you also can never please everyone, right? Yeah, you can't. Being a director of an organisation is quite different to being a curator. 
your concerns are much uh, are, are different. So my concerns are quite broad. I've got to think about the programme, but also I've got to think about the sustainability model for um, somewhere that's predominantly funded by Arts Council funding. Is that not a bit of a shame yeah. that you, you have to have those concerns and be preoccupied with that and don't necessarily get to... I like that. I think that's... <laughs> I, well, yeah, it's, I quite like that. And that's maybe because I quite enjoy running the business. So yeah. um, with our business, quite a lot of the stuff that's considered boring is some of the stuff that I really like doing, like um, the spreadsheets, the finance management. So you're a, di a director now. Uh, yeah. That's and the, so you um, get to decide what what is shown, what, yeah, what I, culture is. What do you base it on? I've based a lot of my kind of pre-selections on people that I've had some involvement with uh, in the past, basically because I have a, a, a greater understanding of their work. There is definite issues with that, I think, because eventually you might, you might end up uh, being too insular, just showing the people that you're already familiar with. Yeah, I think. But then, I mean, just because one big problem, though, is like when you go to a gallery and there's some work in there, you don't know anything about the artist and you're just presented with this stuff, it's very hard to necessarily know what you think about that. Yeah, I think that's a problem. But I think it's not a problem that many people want to address or want to solve. A lot of galleries base themselves on a commercial model where it's like a, a lot of things in the space and there's not really an introduction. Loads of exhibitions are boring. Yeah, well, it's dead boring, but also in a commercial sense, it doesn't really matter because the work can be explained to the people who want to buy it and then they and then can buy it. It serves a function. That is fundamentally flawed when it becomes a public institution that's not reliant on commercial sales. With art, or maybe it's just because artists aren't good enough or galleries aren't doing a good enough job that we just, you know, you turn up and you feel like you don't know anything. I think the onus is more on the galleries to do that. Yeah, that's a relief. Um, yeah, well, so I problem. don't have to worry about that. No, you don't, but I do. <laughs> My problem with art always has been and still is that there's always a hurdle to get over. Like, people have to go, oh, it's art. Like, you don't question a film or music or a book. You, you go, oh, it's a book. With art, there's always this sort of barrier or something in the way between what's going on and, and an audience. Like, I still, I still feel that with most of the exhibitions I go to. I share the same thing. No one says, I have no idea what was happening there. But no people... one will say that to you anymore because they, you know, they won't want to offend you because they'll want opportunities. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is that. I will, because uh, Cause I know you're not going to give me a show. Well, so. it's not ruled out. <laughs> yeah. Just keep that, bear that in mind. So do you feel like you've succeeded? N no. <laughs> uh, well, in some things, yeah. Recently, I feel like I've succeeded with the new job I've got from the point of view that I feel like... It's a I'm, real job. Yeah, so sometimes it feels like I'm not actually working. Success is something I think that's perceived by other people. So some people might think, this person, like, yeah, Dave, you're really successful or something yeah. in... in with, within like my art practice or something. But and then your sure. perspective of it's totally different. Yeah, because yeah. you know everything about it. Like, yeah. And sometimes <laughs> what you project is a successful sen uh, like side of yourself or something. Yeah, I don't know if I've, I do that. I think people probably would look at you and think that... Do you think? Yeah, yeah. I think so, I don't, but I think... Uh, <laughs> I often link it back to this like, over professionalisation of, of younger artists. Where, yeah, well, like we're all like taught to be professional or yeah, expected and to, to be. Yeah, sure, to success. Which doesn't make sense. Everyone else looks really more professional than you, so you try and yeah. compete and try and be more professional. So in terms of some things, I don't think I'm necessarily any more successful than I might have been as a young adult. Yeah. Uh, now I'm becoming... You're only 27. I'm slightly, more, I'm slightly older than I was when I left uni, though. So, I mean, how did you get into setting up a cycling clothing company? Me and James, had, we both worked for this company just outside of Sheffield. He'd worked for them for much longer than me and I'd only fairly recently worked there. They asked me to go over to the Sheffield branch and I was like, this is great, I really love my job. Working, selling bikes, stuff like that. And I had a, the worst experience with the owner of the business where he swore at me all on the shop floor in front of all the customers and, and shouted at me and just told him to f off. And then he sacked me. Um, and then James left two days later. And then we were like... I've well, never been sacked. Have you not? No, I've, I've sort of... I think it must be quite fun. Oh, it was, it's like out of body. Yeah. Um, where, like, I cycled home and rang Liz, and I was like, I've just done this. And she was like, Yeah, you, you haven't, you can't do that. <laughs> and I was like, I did, I swore. I was like, I felt like if I replayed it, I couldn't have done it any better. So, yeah, we both left. And then we were like, Why don't we uh, set up your own thing? Yeah. Was that sort of your artistic instinct kicking in? Yeah, just do it. Like, um, and I think that, that's definitely related to putting your own projects on. You just 
put yourself in a position where, well, if this person, Joe Bloggs, has done it, like I feel like we're maybe... It can't be that hard. Yeah, yeah. And is it nice to actually sell stuff yeah. compared to art, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where yeah. you never sell anything? Well, that's it. I don't know, apart from like prints, maybe I, I don't know if I've sold any, th maybe one thing. We felt like it was a no-brainer to do something like that. And it was something we could do whilst we were also working. It's part of my interview for the block position. One of the questions was, you've got a lot of commitments elsewhere. How do you figure out? Oh, how will you do? manage it? Yeah, yeah, how do you manage it? I said, but to be honest, I just will do it. Like I was yeah. preaching to the people who have done loads of projects at the same time. You just get it done. You know how, how it goes. Yeah, yeah, there's no, you're preaching to the converted. So what's next? I'm going to have a child. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I've touched upon that a little bit. There's a friend of mine who was a bit older who'd had a baby, he was an artist, and uh, I'd not seen him for a while. And when I saw him, he just stopped me and he was like, whatever you do, don't have a baby <laughs> until you've made it. It was a cautionary warning. Yeah. But also people will be like, well, how do you have, to, are you sure you've got time to take on that big project? Are you sure you've got time to do that and that and then set up a business or do this, this and this? And it's the same for lots of people. And you do. Do you f feel like you do less stuff for free or at a loss as it normally is? Yeah. It's really hard to say that without feeling like a diva. Like I'm not <laughs> going to do that now. But it's so basic. It's yeah. this idea that I'm not going to do this thing now for, for no money and maximum effort because that just seems so logical an idea. I can't repay my mortgage in kind. I've got to have money <laughs> to pay my mortgage in, in sterling. It's quite unusual, I think, like an artist of your age to have a house as well. I mean, I don't know how much yeah. that's also just being based in Sheffield or... And also been working in a job that allowed me to save money. Yeah. Um, was good. And also to be quite committed to being in one place. And also being in a... Yeah, because normally everyone thinks, oh, well, in a year or two, I might move to Berlin or yeah. whatever, so I'm not going to buy anywhere, but... And a lot of people do, I guess you've um, <laughs> and, but a lot of people don't. I wanted to buy a house, we wanted to have a family. And what's interesting is that that seem, seems quite perverse to other artists, that, that, that's, that I might yeah. have the same wants as people who might be working in a bank. We talked about it before, about how uh, you always found it quite difficult to imagine me as an artist because I wasn't the sort of person who, you, who looked like an artist or acted like an well, artist. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know what I meant by that necessarily. No, but, <laughs> but to have a similar sort of um, things that I might want to have. And I think everyone kind of has it, but they feel like they should put it out of the mind. I think maybe a lot of people, or a lot of artists think that if you have that stuff, you almost lose credibility. Yeah. You know, like you need to be living in a warehouse somewhere or, you know, like that seems to be part of people's identity. Like they need, you know, they want, rather than just making some artwork. You have a different perception of your, what you think other people think of you than what actually other people do. So when I stopped making work for a little bit, I was like, oh, I'm never going to get any shows now. I'm going to, have to start from the bottom again. And no one cares that you haven't been doing stuff for, for the most <laughs> They've part. They've not been paying up. Yeah, like, oh, well, I didn't, sorry, I didn't realise you'd stopped. I was living my own life doing this. <laughs> and that's how it should be. Um, but you always think, if you always thought about, oh, if I buy a house, how are people going to believe in my plight as an artist? Yeah. I bet. But who wants plight? I don't really like the idea of struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how else to say it. But then why do you cycle up hills? No, that's a different sort of struggle. That's <laughs> right. Like an, like an emotional struggle, I'm not too keen on... Like physical an, struggle's fine, emotional struggle, not so much. Yeah, yeah. Because the physical one, it's easy to get over. You just... Uh, Recover. You, you just concentrate and it's fine. There's something really pure and, and, and simple about that. Like if you're running a long way or you're cycling or you're rowing, something really nice about how simple that activity is. Yeah and how simple the, the return of the activity is. If you put more pressure on the pedals, you'll go faster, but you also know that it's probably going to hurt more. And there's something really, and that doesn't really ever change. And I like that. There's something right. nice and simple. Whereas in other things you're doing, you might put a lot of effort in, expect something and then not have the same There's return. no instant return. Yeah, yeah. So you like that control? Yeah, in some respects, because I don't have it in other things. I think if I had control all the time, then I'd want the things that were less controlled. I feel like I'm only learning that now as I tell you. Uh, that's what I need. <laughs> right. It's like a cathartic therapy yeah. session or something. Oh, it's been good. It's good, yeah, it helps. I feel lighter. It's probably not good going down a hill after. Right. I probably feel lighter going up the hill. But, um, yeah. Whoa, I guess that's, should we go downhill? Yeah, go back to Sheffield. Right. <laughs>